Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This lecture is part two of RNA virus and associated cutaneous syndromes. So we'll straight away start discussing measles. Measles virus belong to paramyxovirus family. It normally grows in cell that line the back of throat and the lungs. It's a human disease not known to occur in animals and is a leading cause of death among young children globally, despite the availability of safe and effective vaccine. An estimated 197,000 people died from measles in 2007, and mostly they were children under five years of age. The targeted vaccination campaign have had a major impact on reducing measles death. From 2000 to 2007, about 576 million children who live in high risk countries were vaccinated. So the global measles death decreased by 74% during the period. The largest health gain occurred in Eastern Mediterranean and Africa, where measles cases and death fell by 90 and 89% respectively. So the effective vaccination campaign has greatly reduced the measles mortality. Transmission. Measles is highly contagious virus that is spread by coughing and sneezing, by close personal contact or by direct contact with infected nasal or throat secretions. The virus remains active and contagious in air or on infected surfaces for up to two hours. It can be transmitted by an infected individual from four days prior to the onset of rash to four days after the rash erupts. So approximately eight days uh, in which the individual is infectious, that is four days prior to the rash and four days after the rash. <clears throat> the signs of measles are the first sign is of course fever which begins about 10 to 12 days after exposure of the virus and it lasts for 4 to 7 days so the incubation period is about uh, 10 to 12 days and the disease starts as fever which persists for four to seven days. A running nose, cuff, red and watery eyes, small white spots inside the cheek, which is the enanthem called as the coplic spot, develop in the initial stage. This is the stage when the fever is there but rash has not erupted. So rash developed four to seven days after the fever or 14 days after the exposure to the virus. The rash is on the face and upper neck. In about three days, the rash spread downwards and eventually reaching the hands and feet. The rash lasts for about five to six days and then fades. This is a typical maculopapular rash of measles. You can see the rash on the face as well as on the trunk. Coplic spots are the small white specks which are seen in the oral mucosa opposite the premolar teeth from second day onward. The severe measles is more likely among the poorly nourished young children, especially those with insufficient vitamin A or whose immune system have been weakened by HIV, AIDS, or other immunosuppressive uh, treatment. Complications are more common in children under five years of age or adults over 20 years of age. The most serious complications include blindness, encephalitis, severe diarrhea and dehydration, or severe respiratory infections such as pneumonia. Prognosis. 
as high as 10% of the measles cases result in death among the population with high level of malnutrition and lack of adequate health care. People who recover from measles are immune for rest of their lives. Who is at risk? The unvaccinated young children are at highest risk. Any non-immune person who has not been vaccinated or suffered from the disease can become infected. Measles is still common in many developing countries and measles outbreaks can be particularly deadly in countries experiencing or recovering from natural disasters or conflicts. Treatment. Severe complications from measles can be avoided through supportive care that ensure a good nutrition, adequate fluid intake, and treatment of dehydration. Antibiotics should be prescribed to treat eye and ear infections and pneumonia. All children in developing countries diagnosed with measles should receive two doses of vitamin A supplements given 24 hours apart. This can help preventing the eye damage and blindness. Vitamin A supplementation is shown to reduce the number of deaths from measles to about 50%. Vitamin A in measles. Vitamin A should be administered immediately on diagnosis and repeated the next day, so two doses. The recommended age-specific daily dose is 50,000 international units for infants younger than six months of age. So um, I have just mentioned that how many drops of Amex drop, which is a commonly used vitamin A drops contain, one drop contain 2,500 units. So if we are treating this uh, vitamin A deficiency by Amex drop, then we need to give 20 drops. Uh, on day one, and similarly, 20 drops on day two. Then 100,000 international units for, uh, um, for infants between 6 to 11 years of age. And for such uh, dose, we need 40 drops. And for 200,000 international units for children of 12 months of age and older, it means 80 drops. So this dose is given twice, 24 hours apart. Ribavirin in measles. The reported benefits of ribavirin therapy if given in severely affected patients will decrease the duration of symptoms, shorten the hospitalization stay, reduction in appearance of measles-related complications, and reduce seriousness of severe forms of symptoms, particularly pneumonia and respiratory distress. A five days course of intravenous ribavirin at a dose of one gram every six hourly in serious patients. Oral ribavirin can be given in a dose of 600 milligram thrice a day. But usually this therapy is reserved for serious measles, measles patients and not a routine therapy. Then measles, uh, prevention. The measles vaccine is in use since 40 years and is safe, effective, and inexpensive. It is usually incorporated with rubella or mumps in countries where these illnesses are a problem and is equally effective in the single or combined form. Two doses of vaccine are recommended to ensure immunity as about 15% of the vaccinated children fail to develop immunity from the first dose. So need to be repeated. Rubella is uh, another childhood um, exanthem, also known as the German measles or three-day measles. It is an infection that primarily affects the skin and lymph nodes and caused by a rubella virus, which, is, which as measles is transmitted by droplets from nose and throat. The only concern is that if it affects the pregnant women, it causes congenital rubella syndrome in the developing babies. 
Before a vaccine against rubella become available in 1969, rubella epidemic occurred every six to nine years, and kid a, kids aged between five to nine were primarily affected, and many cases of congenital rubella occurred as well. Now, due to immunization of children, there are much fewer cases of rubella and congenital rubella. Most rubella infection today appear in young, non-immunized adults rather than children. It is estimated that 10% of young females are susceptible to rubella, which could pose a danger to any children they might have someday. So the rubella is a mild sort of infection, but the only concern is the disease occurring in pregnant women and transmitting the infection to the children resulting in congenital rubella syndrome. Incubation period of rubella is 14 to 23 days with an average of 16 to 18 days. Duration, the rubella rash typically lasts three days. Lymph node remains swollen for a week or more. Joint pain for more than two weeks. Children recover within one week, but adults may take little longer. Sign and symptoms of rubella infection, it is usually begins with one to two days of mild fever, just like measles. The measles fever is for four to seven days, but rubella fever is for one to two days. And the fever is also mild. Then in addition to that, there will be headache, running nose, swollen and tender lymph nodes. These swollen and tender lymph nodes is a little different from measles. And usually the lymph nodes are seen on the back of the neck and behind the ears. The rash begin on the face and is spread downwards and is spread down, it clears the face. And the rash is often the first sign of illness that a parent notices. So the rash is not, is a little faint rash, which is much fainter than the rash of measles. And uh, the duration is also less. And sometimes the fever is so mild that the fever is not noticed, but the rash is noticed. Rubella rash appear as pink and light red spots, which can itch and last for up to three days. This is a mild maculopapular or morbiliform rash uh, with, of rubella. Congenital rubella syndrome, which is the uh, point of utmost concern, and the children infected are at risk of growth and mental retardation. Malformation of heart and eyes, deafness, liver, spleen, and bone marrow problems. So it's quite a risky syndrome. Contagiousness. The rubella virus has a nosocomial spread. People are most contagious from one week before and one week after the rash appears. And infants who have congenital rubella syndrome can shed the virus in urine and fluid from the nose and throat for an year or more. Prevention. Rubella is prevented by rubella vaccine. Widespread immunization against rubella is critical to controlling the spread of the disease. The vaccine is usually given to children at 12 to 15 months of age as a part of scheduled MMR, measles, mum, rubella immunization. A second dose of MMR is given at four to six years of age. The rubella vaccine should not be given to pregnant women or to women who may become pregnant within one month of receiving the vaccine. Treatment, there, unless there are complications, rubella will resolve on its own. Any pregnant woman who have been exposed to rubella should contact her obstetrician immediately who may consider the possibility of therapeutic abortion. Petriasis rosea. Petriasis rosea is a common benign papillosquamous disease that was originally described by Camille Melchor Geibert in 1860. Petriasis denotes the fine scales and rosea translates as a rose or pink color. Its diagnosis is important because it resembles secondary syphilis. Pathophysiology. P. rosea has been considered to be a viral exanthem, and a proof of this hypothesis is 
Pyrosia has been linked to upper respiratory tract infection. It can cluster within families and close contacts. It is an increased incidence in immunocompromised. The incidence may increase in fall and the spring. A single outbreak tend to elicit a lifelong immunity. So all the features of the infection is just like a viral exanthem. Increased amount of CD4 positive T cells and Langerhans cells are present. Also, anti immunoglobulin M. Two keratinocytes have been found in patients with pyrosia. The finding may be associated with exanthemic phase of the presumed viral infection. No single virus is proved to cause the disease. Picornavirus like particles are seen in the tissue. Serology and PCR for viral DNA have been negative for EB virus, parvovirus B19, cytomegalo, HH8, and uh, herpes 1 and 2. Other work demonstrate that herpes virus 6 and 7, DNA in both lesions and plasma in patient with pityriasis. So um, the Picano virus and herpes virus 6 and 7 are the most commonly thought viruses. Causes, Pyrosia may represent a viral exanthem and at time, an anthem as well. Pyrosia, like drug eruption, is uh, reported to be caused by captopril, metronidazole, isotretinoin, penicillamine, levamisole, bismuth, gold, barbiturate, ketotiophen, clonidine, aspirin, and omeprazole. A single case is reported to be caused by terbenafine. Certain vaccinations such as BCG and diphtheria is also reported to cause a similar eruption. There is some relationship with stress. Frequency international. Worldwide, Pyrosia is estimated to account for 2% of dermatological outpatient visits. The disease is more common in spring and the fall in temperate climate zones. However, it may be more frequent in summer in some other regions and it favors the hot, dry seasons in Australia, India, and Malaysia. Mortality and morbidity. Pyrosia is a benign self-limiting disease associated with mild morbidity and rash occasionally provides. It has been associated with neonatal hypotonia, hyporeactivity, and premature delivery. An increased risk of miscarriage can occur, especially in mother who develop pyrosia within first 15 weeks of their pregnancy. Incidence. No racial predominance is reported. Sex pyrosia is com more common in women, almost twice as common. Age. Pyrosia is commonly developed in children and young adults. Most patients are aged uh, 10 to 35 years. The clinical history should include the question about close contact with similar eruption. The finding is uncommon because most cases of pyrosia are sporadic and thought to reflect a weakly contagious disease. History of medication intake should also be obtained. The rash of pyrosia is typically begin with a solitary macule that starts the eruption. And this macule is called as the herald patch. It is usually a salmon colored macule which enlarges over a few days to become a patch with cholerate of fine scales just inside a well-demarcated border. So cholerate means that the erythema is advancing and the rash is falling behind that advancing erythema. So this is a typical rash, the herald patch. Within a few days of appearance of herald patch, a generalized exanthem develops. This is a herald patch and the rest is the generalized exanthem. The secondary phase consists of bilateral and symmetrical. Salmon colored macules or patches 0.5 to 1.5 centimeter in diameter with a colorate of scale and described as a cigarette paper like appearance. So such appearance is very similar to secondary syphilis except the presence of this herald patch. And any patient who reports with such a rash should be uh, ordered a VDRL and TPHA to rule out, uh, rule out secondary syphilis. Then clinical history. Lesions are oriented with long axes along the cleavage lines. This phase 
tend to resolve over the next six weeks, but variability is common. Pruritus is common, although mild to moderate severity, and it occurs in 75% of the patients. Atypical pityriasis rosea. It is seen in 20%. It can be a localized P. rosea lesions which is localized to a single region, such as abdomen, groin, distal extremities, palm, and soles. Inverse PR, since the PR is most common on the trunk, so the inverse PR manifests on the face and distal extremities and is seen most commonly in children. Then unilateral PR, when the lesions do not cross the midline and drug-induced cases are frequently observed without the heral patch. Variations in lesion morphology. Petriasis sarcinata et marginata of Vida. This is an atypical large patches, tend to be fewer in number and may collase. Then papular pyrosia can also occur Having a scaly papule in the normal distribution, this form is more common in children than in adults. The primary lesions can be vesicular, posterior, articarial, or purpuric. EM-like plaques are also evident. These are all the rarities. Purpuric P. rosea is seen both in adults and children and follow the usual presentation of the disease. Oral involvement may occur as punctate hemorrhages, ulcers, papular vesicles or bully. Most studies find the incidence to be less than 10% involvement of oral mucosa. Medical care, the most important part of treating patient with pyrosia is reassurance that the rash will resolve. Relief of pruritus by using topical steroids, oral antihistamines, topical menthol phenol lotions and oatmeal baths. Systemic steroids are not recommended. UVB, light therapy, starting at 80% of the minimum erythrogenic dose may rapidly release pruritus in resistant cases. For vesicular pyrosia, a single case was considerably improved with 20 mg of dapsone given twice a day. High dose acyclovir, 800 mg QID may help shorten the disease, especially if instituted early in the disease course. Further trials are needed to confirm this finding. A number of antibiotics have been tried without much success. Both azithromycin and erythromycin have shown to not shorten the disease course. Then another um, com not very uncommon disease is Ganetti crosti syndrome or papular acrodermatitis of childhood. This is a self-limiting childhood exanthem that manifests in characteristic acral distribution. It is rarely associated with systemic findings. The original case described in Italy by Ganatti in 1955 were associated with hepatitis B virus infection, although other viral infections currently account for most cases. Pathophysiology. The most recent studies have demonstrated that Ganetti crosti syndrome is more commonly associated with both viral and bacterial infections. Several studies have failed to demonstrate the deposition of viral particles or bacteria within the thermos. In US, EB virus has been most frequently associated with Ganetti crosti. The pathophysiological process underlies the syndrome remains unknown although it is believed to represent an immunological response to the transient viremia or bacteremia, possibly a delayed type hypersensitivity response. The deposition of circulating immune complexes in dermis may play a role in initiating the papular rash. So causes, the viral causes include the hepatitis B, which is the most common, then Epstein-Barr is the second most common. Other viruses are respiratory syncytial virus, Coxsackie virus, para-influenza, parvovirus B19, pox virus, cytomegalovirus 1, human herpes 6, rotavirus, and HIV. And a few bacterial causes that include streptococci, Neisseria, mycoplasma, and Bartonellas, and Borrelia. It can also develop after vaccination of hepatitis A or B by MMR, influenza virus, oral poliovirus, and Japanese encephalitis virus. Frequency, it is an sporadic disease with no apparent genetic or familial predisposition and most commonly seen in spring 
and some are. There is no racial predilection. In children, male and females are equally affected. In adults, it is seen almost exclusively in female age. The onset of eruption is typically in children aged between 3 months to 15 years, with an average age of 2 years and peak incidence in 1 to 6 years. Adults are reported in women aged 17 to 46 years. Clinical history. Children usually present with a cutaneous eruption that develops over several days. The eruption typically lasts at least 10 days, but can last longer than six weeks in more than 50% of patients. Complete resolution typically takes more than two months. Re recurrence are rare and pruritus accompanies the eruption in 23% of the patients. The cutaneous eruption. Monomorphous pink. 1 to 10 mm papules or papulovesicles localize symmetrically and acrily over the extensor surfaces of extremities, buttocks, and the face. Extensive involvement of trunk is not consistent with diagnosis of gynetic crosti. Number of lesions range from few to many. And over days to week, the papules acquire a smooth top, polished and lichenoid appearance. So this is how the rash manifests. Mild constitutional symptoms like low-grade fever, malaise, pharyngitis, and symptoms of upper respiratory tract. A high prevalence of atopic dermatitis in patient versus control. Other findings. Fever, 27%. Lymphadenopathy, 31%. Hepatosplenomegaly, 4%. Pharyngeal erythema, oropharyngeal ulcers or vesicles, or tonsillar swelling in case secondary to infection of upper respiratory tract. Mortality and morbidity. Gynetic crosti is generally a benign, self limiting condition. The original case of hepatitis B virus associated disease, anecteric hepatitis, develop in a proportion of patients, also seen in association with EBV. Chronic liver disease has followed the initial phase of infection with hepatitis B. Lab studies are usually not indicated. Blood count may reveal lymphocytosis and relative monocytosis and lymphopenia secondary to underlying viral infection. In cases associated with acute infection with hepatitis B, EBV, or cytomegalo, anecteric hepatitis is evident by elevation of level of hepatic transaminases. A viral agent can be identified in approximately one-third of the cases. Epstein-Barr by monospot, IgM, and IgG titers or PCR. Cytomegalovirus by IgM and IgG titer or serum cytomegalovirus antigen level or PCR. Respiratory syncytial virus or para-influenza virus by nasal washing for fluorescent antibody testing. Parvovirus B19 by IgM and IgG titer or PCR. Hepatitis 6 by PCR and group A beta hemolytic streptococci by throat culture. Treatment. Education and reassurance are usually sufficient for concerned patients. Parents. Some children require general supportive and symptomatic care for associated viral and streptococcal infection. Application of soothing, anti itch, topical preparation with oral antihistamine is usually sufficient to relieve the pruritus. Avoidance of topical steroids is usually advised, but can be given in severe cases. Prognosis is excellent and syndrome is generally a benign, self-limiting condition with only rare complications. And the complication is chronic liver disease, especially if the disease is due to hepatitis B virus. Then another childhood syndrome is papular purpuric glove and sock syndrome. It's an acute acral dermatosis occurring predominantly in adults and first described in 1990. It start with a febrile illness. Hand, wrist, feet, ankles are affected by intensely pruritic erythema and papular edema. There may also be associated fatigue or purpura. Cutaneous features are frequently accompanied by oral inflammation and ulceration. Condition settles in two weeks. In many cases, no specific cause is identified, but parvovirus B19 infection has been suggested to act as a trigger for syndrome and 
measles, hepatitis B, and cytomegalovirus infection have also been reported in association. Torch syndrome. The term torch was originally used to encompass the congenital infection caused by toxoplasma, rubella, cytomegalo, and herpes virus 1 and 2, in which the clinical presentation was sometime, somewhat similar. In practice, there are some distinctions, but all causes cutaneous and disseminated abnormalities in children. Skin abnormalities of jointes, purpura, and petechiae are the more common. Vesicles and mucosal ulcerations occur with herpes infection. Since the acronym is used, several other congenital infections are recognized to be important and concept of torch is now of limited value. Kikuchi Fujimoto disease or histocytic necrotizing lymph adenitis. This consists of painful lymph adenitis affecting mainly the cervical nodes. There is associated fever malaise and URTI. Erythematous indurated plaques, but also macule and papules may be seen. And the viral infection reported is EBV, parvovirus B19, herpes simplex virus, herpes virus 6. Although not all investigator, investigation, investigators have confirmed these findings. Now, in the end, I am going to discuss uh, the parvovirus infection which is called as a fifth disease. The parvovirus B19 is the only member of this family that infects human. Parvovirus B19 is not an RNA virus, but it is rather a single standard DNA virus. Most cases are seen in children between two to 10 years. Incubation period is six days and viremia peaks at eight to nine days. And at day 10, there is almost a complete loss of bone marrow erythroid precursor. So this is the most serious complication of fifth disease. The rash of erythema infectiosum, which is the fifth disease, appear at about day 15 as the marrow recovers and IgM antibodies become detectable. The spread occur by droplets from nasopharynx with secondary attack rates of about 50% in susceptible household contacts. Once infection gives a lifelong immunity, small outbreaks of fifth disease usually occur in spring and the distribution is worldwide. The name fifth disease comes from the place on the standard list of rash causing childhood disease. This is important because why it is, is it called as a fifth disease? So what is the first disease? First disease is actually measles. Second disease is scarlet fever which is a bacterial infection. So these, these diseases are the common viral exanthems and are labeled as such. Rubella is the third disease. Duke disease is the fourth disease, but it is no longer widely acceptable as a distinct entity from scarlet fever. Fifth disease is erythema infectiosum and sixth disease is roseola infantum. The erythema infectiosum pathogenesis, the major target for parvovirus B19 is the bone marrow, erythroid progenitor cells. The virus is cytotoxic for these cells, which causes a halt in red cell production. Exanthem and polyarthralgias are the result of antibody antigen immune complexes and occur as bone marrow recovery is underway. So the main and first attack of parvovirus B19 is on erythroid progenitor cells. And after that, immune complexes are formed. That is a cause of rash and polyarthralgia. Infection in pregnant women has a trans placental transmission. The exanthem develops suddenly without a prodromal symptom. So uh, unlike measles and rubella, the rash manifests suddenly. Rose red papules on the cheek rapidly collates to form hot, turgid appearance, almost erysiploid giving a slap cheek appearance, and there is often the perioral pallor. Palm and soles may be involved and acral lesions may be petechial. There may be dark red macules on the buccal and genital mucous membranes. Eruption usually fades in six to 10 days. In adults, polyarthralgia is often the predominant symptom, usually recovers in a few weeks. 
During the early stage, there is leukocytosis with relative lymphopenia. Later, an eosinophilia of up to 36% may be accompanied. Other manifestation. Systemic vasculitis in form of polyarthritis nodosa, urticaria and angioedema, acute generalized exanthematous pustulosis, a papillar pruritic glove and sock syndrome involving perioral and perianal skin. Treatment. Erzema infectiosum is itself harmless and no treatment is required. Chronic barbovirus B19 infection cause a red cell aplasia and should be treated with intravenous immunoglobulins infusion. So this brings to the end of this lecture. I hope this lecture was useful for you and hope to see you next time with another edition of my lecture. Thank you and have a good bye and good day.